In this section, you'll learn how to prove and use the properties of triangle mid-segments. In the previous section, we explored what happens when you have the medians and the altitudes of a triangle. And we also explored what happens when you have perpendicular bisectors of a segment and angle bisectors. So we've got one more type of segment here that we're going to learn about, and that is called the mid-segment. So the mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. So if we were to look at the triangle here that we have, triangle ABC, and I wanted to draw a mid-segment, that means that I need to join the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. So I'm just going to approximate this here, but if I were to take segment AB, I'd say that was the midpoint where this was congruent to that. Um, let's call this midpoint, let's call it uh, P. Okay, so um, if I wanted to join two midpoints, I would also have to take segment BC, let's say, and find the midpoint there. Now we have this segment congruent to this segment, and let's call this uh, Q. So if I were to draw this segment in that joins two midpoints, that would be a mid-segment. PQ is a mid-segment of triangle ABC. Now next it says every triangle has three mid-segments. So we could also find the midpoint of this segment here, and let's call that R, and that is where AR is congruent to RC, and we already have one triangle, um, one mid-segment drawn in here. Another mid-segment would be connecting Q to R, and then a last mid-segment would be connecting P to R. So this triangle has three, every triangle in fact, has three mid-segments if you connect um, the midpoints of each of the segments. And this new triangle that's formed, it says, is called the mid-segment triangle. So triangle PQR is the mid-segment triangle of triangle ABC. Okay, make sure that you're clear about the difference between a mid-segment and a median. Okay, here we have a mid-segment because if this segment here is congruent to this one and this segment here is congruent to this one, AB is a mid-segment because it connects the midpoints of two segments. Oops, mid-segment. However, if we go from the vertex and go to the midpoint of the opposite side where these are congruent, then AD is not a mid-segment because it doesn't go from midpoint to midpoint, it goes from vertex to midpoint. So AD is a median. So from midpoint to midpoint gives us a mid-segment from vertex to midpoint gives us a median. Okay, so let's explore some of the properties of mid-segments. If we have a triangle, x, y, z, where x is negative 1, 8, so let's plot the points of this triangle. So we've got negative 1, positive 8, that would be here, that would be point x. Where y is 9, 2, so positive 9, positive 2, so there is y. And z is 3, negative 4, so 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there is our point z. So we have triangle x, y, z. Then it says m and n are midpoints of x, z, and y, z. So I have to find the midpoint of x, z, so midpoint of x, z, I'm just actually going to call that m, because m is the midpoint of x, z, and it is going to be add the x's, negative 1 plus 3, 
and divide by 2 and add the y's. 8 plus negative 4 and divide by 2. So point M is, that would be positive 2 of that, so that's 1, and then 8 minus 4 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So point M, the midpoint of XZ, is the point 1, 2. So that, ooh, that is right there. So I'm going to call that M. And N is the midpoint of YZ, so I've got to find the midpoint here. So N, I'm going to add the coordinates of Y and Z. So 9 plus 3, ugh. 9 plus 3 divided by 2, and then 2 plus negative 4 divided by 2. And that gives us point N at 9 plus 3 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. And 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So if I go to 6, negative 1, right there I have N, which is the midpoint of YZ. Now it says show that MN is parallel to XY. So if I draw my segment MN in here, here's my segment MN. I've got to show that that's parallel to XY. Well, to show that things are parallel, I know that parallel segments have the same slope. So I'm going to find the slope of segment MN, which is going to be 2 minus negative 1 over 6 minus 1 and I end up with 3 over 5 and I'm gonna find the slope of segment XY and that is let's see um, 8 minus 2 over negative 1 minus 9 so that gives me a 6 over negative 10 which looks like it is negative 3 fits. But if they're parallel, then they have to have the same slope. So what am I doing wrong? If I do 2 minus negative 1, ah, on the bottom here, there we go. It should be 1 minus 6, which would make this negative. So because they have the same slope, that means that they're parallel. So we've shown that they're parallel. And now we have to show that MN is half the distance or half the length of XY. So in order to do that, I would actually use the distance formula. I would find the distance of MN and find the distance of XY and compare them to show that they are um, that one is half of the other. So it's like you're doing a coordinate proof. I'm not going to do that here, but if you do the distance from M to N, and then do the distance formula from X to Y, you should be able to see that this distance from M to N is half the distance from X to Y. So we've just discovered something about mid-segments, two things about mid-segments, and they are summed up in the mid-segment theorem. The very first thing that we discovered about mid-segments is that, one, the mid-segment is going to be parallel to one side of the triangle. Here, DE is a mid-segment, and it is parallel to AC. The other thing we just discovered about mid-segments is that the mid-segment will be half of that length. So DE is half the length of AC. And that's the mid-segment theorem. It says a mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to a side of the triangle, and its length is half the length of that side. Okay, so let's keep that in mind as we solve some of these other problems. Okay, for this one, it says find the measure of, we need the measure of A or BD, and we need the measure of angle CBD. And we need to use the fact that mid-segments are half the length and parallel. 
So for segment BD, that would be the mid-segment, this guy here. Okay. Well, we know that segment BD must be half of segment AE. We also know that segment AE is 17, so BD is equal to half of 17. So that means segment BD is going to end up being 8.5. Now we also have to use the fact that the segments are parallel in order to find some angles. So I'm going to erase this here and see what sides we're looking at because if they're parallel then we have parallels and transversals all over the place. We're trying to find angle CBD. CBD would be this angle right here. Okay. So we might be looking at uh, let's see, if uh, AB is parallel to FD, these guys are parallel, and we use BD as our transversal, then that means that these guys are alternate interior angles. Again, you have to try to imagine everything else gone away, and we've got these two parallel lines, AC is parallel to FD because FD is a mid-segment. And then BD serves as our transversal. So that means that angle FDB and angle CBD are alternate interior angles. So because they're alternate interior angles, we can say parallel lines imply that alternate interior, ooh, sorry about that. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So that means the measure of angle uh, CBD has to be the same as FDB, and it would be 26 degrees.